I think the hardest part about pivot tables is not so much dragging fields between these four sections, but finally settling on a layout that you're happy with, that's actually conveying the message you want to convey. If you want to change a pivot table, it's quite simply a matter of dragging the fields between these various sections. For example, I might decide actually I have department under region and I won't even use the columns. And if I go this way, then all I've got is a focus on region and then within that I can see the departments. So I can see quite clearly that Christchurch doesn't have an automotive or a mechanical or even a production department. And Auckland doesn't have an engineering or marketing department. I can also rearrange them. I can put region below department and now my focus is on department and the regions within that department. So the order is important and you don't have to utilize all these sections. I'm just utilizing rows and values. But one section we haven't had a look at is the filters or report filters section. For example, if I was to put year into this section, Right above my pivot table is what they call a filter or a report filter. And the whole idea here is I can hit the drop down and I can choose a certain year and OK. And so this has altered what I'm seeing from all of the years to just a specific year. I can also hit the drop down again and go back to all. Just like the rows, you can have more than one filter. I might decide I only not only want year, but I'll also have region. Region disappears from rows because it can't be a filter and a row at the same time. But I have now got two filters, one by year and one by region. And I can use either or both. For example, if I choose Auckland, I'm just seeing the pivot table for the Auckland region. If I choose Auckland 2012, I'm seeing the pivot table for the Auckland and the year 2012. Let's just adjust or change the pivot table a little bit more. I'm going to put department as columns. I'm going to keep year and region as my filters. And I'm going to add last name as a row. So now I'm saying just the Auckland 2012. Now a quick way to clear this filter is I'm just going to use the clear button that we added um, earlier when we got into advanced filtering and filtering. And now I'm seeing the entire pivot table all last names, all departments, all years and all regions. Now the other thing you can do is you can have more than, not only more than two filters and more than two rows and more than two columns, but you can also have more than two values. At the moment I'm summarizing the actual values by department and by last name. But I might want to also sum the target values by department and last name. So I'll, I'll add target to my value section. Now as soon as I let go, you'll see an extra field appear in the columns section. When you have more than one value, this values field appears in the columns section. And what that basically means is the sum of actual and the sum of target, these values, are being shown as columns. But I could drag the values into the rows section, and now sum of actual and sum of target have been shown as rows in my pivot table. So that's what that little values button means. It means that you've got more than one value and do you want to show them as rows or do you want to show them as columns? Now often I find sum of in front of these value names is a bit clumsy. So I often want to change the name of fields. I'll click on my sum of actual and I'll choose value field settings. And instead of sum of actual I might call it total actual. So its source name is actual but we've given it a custom name and I can click OK. And here's my total actual showing in my pivot table and in my value section. I can click on some of target, go into value field settings and call that total target. And OK. So it is possible to rename values in a pivot table.